this is a sign that this new stuff is exploding, obviously. I mean, uh, those who work on it, uh, we are all very amazed about, for example, these 100 million downloads within the last two years. I've never heard a number before like that from an open source project. <laughs> so uh, <clears throat> we were very lucky two years ago when the first public workshop in San Francisco happened with Docker. Uh, we are just around the corner. So uh, when we sat in that workshop with 40 other guys from San Francisco, uh, we immediately thought, so we, we were already working on an HPC cloud platform, which is the Uber cloud. These are these 177 engineering experiments, plus uh, building up the community around this uh, whole theme, which three years ago when we started did not really exist. And uh, <clears throat> so then we continued to develop uh, the marketplace. We call it the shopping mall for engineers and scientists to uh, know, go shopping for uh, services in the space like you know, resource providers, uh, so um, I, IaaS, so infrastructure as a service, like Amazon, Azure, and others uh, which are in the marketplace, uh, software as a service from software vendors like uh, Ansys, CDI.co, Numica, uh, Comsol, and so on, and also consulting services. So that's the marketplace. And uh, it was still cumbersome at the early days to access, and we we are thinking about automating the access for the engineer because in our 177 experiments so far, uh, and we published 60 case studies uh, so, um, for, the, for the community. So in these uh, experiments, engineers always said, I don't want to learn anything new. I'm far too busy and I want to stick with my workstation and I want to get at my fingertip access to any kind of resource uh, which uh, fits my application. Uh, I mean, you know, so in our community, there are 54 cloud providers currently and over 100 uh, software providers. And the cloud providers, they all currently, even currently, uh, still today are offering a very different access and usage processes which you have to learn, and when you go from one to the other, you have to learn again. And uh, so this is uh, far too complex for any production guy, be it scientist or engineer. Uh, and uh, so that, that's when, as I mentioned, as I said, when we, when we um, identified Docker to be very suitable. So number one, obviously for uh, microservices, made for enterprise application, basically, web service oriented applications. And uh, so now we took the Docker layer and put another more HPC tool layer on top uh, of, uh, of it, uh, which we call, because it's our own development, we call it UberCloud containers now. These are uh, containers, bare, uh, so, so base containers, which uh, now are fully equipped with all kinds of additional tools and functions which you are very used to in HPC. And, uh, so oh, I want to go into that one within the next uh, 15 minutes or so. So you have seen that the other guy, Boragenir, is uh, the co-founder. We got together three years ago and uh, first uh, uh, with the aim to explore uh, the challenges which an engineer and scientist uh, is facing when he or she is going to the cloud. And with uh, all this input, from over 3,000 companies who participated until now. Uh, the only way is really, in my humble opinion, this is something like Docker. Uh, so you, can, you, you will see, you can fully automate the access and the use of uh, cloud resources then for any of your applications and data and tools. Okay, so this, is, this was about board. Very quickly, I mentioned, uh, so we first started to build up the community. We invited everybody to join. And uh, there's a lot of communication, there's a lot of information stuff, we write articles and, you know, to build up a community around this theme of, uh, of uh, remote resources, right? So for any kind of high-performance computing, and high-performance computing for us already starts at the engineer's desk. So this is uh, usually a four-way parallel machine on your desk, very powerful. 
uh, but very often to 50% of the engineers and scientists, they regularly complain about the limitations of a workstation. Four cores, very often, is not enough, right? So memory, CPU, and uh, so that's basically our target group. There are 20 million engineers and scientists out there who are using a workstation for their daily simulations as a design and, uh, and uh, uh, development simulations. And uh, there are 30 million more to come in the next 10 years, according to companies like Intel and Microsoft, from, among others, the 3D printing community, uh, where everybody at one point in time has to simulate before he or she wants to print it. Right. Currently, I mean, this simple stuff, it's not really necessary. You, you do an estimate and then you print something nice, uh, toy-wise, but when you go into real production, when you start up your own you know, one-person startup business in the future, there are over 50 million currently just uh, so one man shows, as we say, so one, uh, one person. Uh, and uh, so there are many more coming into, in, in the next 10 years uh, to build up your own business from home. So there will be a big change in uh, these individual uh, companies. Okay, so communities, then uh, we discovered uh, for us, for our purpose, uh, the uh, Docker technology. And it is all about, you know, you see packageability, portability, accessibility, usability, scalability. Uh, so you can really reproduce all that uh, for your application within the Docker container. And uh, so then last year in November, we opened the marketplace. Currently, we have 36 stores. Uh, in the meantime, there are over 20 more in the pipeline. So we hope to get to 50 at the end of the year. Uh, so this is what I call the shopping mall for engineers and scientists for you know, hardware, software, and altogether package for solutions at your fingertip where you can immediately, within seconds, and I will show that in a minute in a little demo, uh, access any kind of resource, uh, respectively, of the application. So uh, just these days, so at the end of the week, uh, we are continuing to work on uh, uh, the go-to-market strategy with that one. There will be a freemium model, so there will be the base HPC container for free for everybody. So free download, and uh, we are continuously, you know, releasing new versions. Then, uh, and when you, you know, get for one year, when you get that, and you want to have all the 32 or so features, HPC-related features, so that the whole thing really looks like your workstation, uh, be more powerful than and sitting on some cloud or even on your workstation. So you can, I mean, you can take the application container, run it on your workstation, run your, any server just around the corner, or run, run on any cloud, obviously, then. So as I said before, there is portability. Um, so, okay. Uh, by the way, if you are interested in participating in our beta uh, initiative, uh, which will start in a few weeks, then uh, just contact me. We will throw the whole container at you with, together with a primer, and uh, then uh, you can uh, just containerize your own stuff and uh, get feedback within three months or so, get feedback to us so that we can finalize the whole thing before we really go to market with that. Okay, so yeah, so that's the marketplace. Uh, for, forget it for now, but there are, there are um, you know, the usual suspects are already part of that, so they, they support this. And uh, obviously the challenge is uh, the licensing, and this is the unfortunate thing, there's nothing standardized, every software provider, ISV, they have their own licensing model, and they have their own uh, uh, kind of idea how to license the whole thing now for the cloud. So this is uh, under the hood, and an engineer wouldn't see that. Right, so when you go to the marketplace, in some or the other way, you pay for, uh, example, for one day on 16 cores, uh, $2.99, you know, full-blown ANSYS or something like that, you know, um, CFX, uh, Fluent, Mechanical, or these kind of things, right? So, okay. Uh, so they are based on Docker very quickly. I mean, you, you can imagine, now, after, after all these great presentations and the inside now, I mean, this, this is really almost, I mean, self-understood. Uh, so that's uh, all the tools. We basically have copied the local desktop and put it in a virtual 
desktop. And the virtual desktop is basically uh, the enhanced container, uh, ready to execute in an instant. I mean, you, you know all that. So this is more now really trivial here for this community. Uh, everything is pre-installed, configured, tested, uh, and uh, running on bare metal. And these are the containers. And it, it looks really like that. You build your stuff. It's stackable, which is very nice. You put everything together. You basically launch it, and it's running now uh, everywhere on workstations, clusters, and clouds. <laughs> so let me see. Uh, yeah. So what, 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 what this does uh, to the roadblocks which we were facing over the last uh, many years then for engineering and scientific applications is basically reducing or mostly even removing all these existing roadblocks. Uh, I won't go into detail here, but there is a little paper, uh, three pages or so on our website. Uh, when you go uh, to, the, uh, uh, so to the community uh, part where we have all these kind of articles about quite a few things. Also, there is a cost article next to it and so on. So you will see uh, a discussion about all these points, how Docker application containers, these enhanced HPC containers, so to speak, help to remove or at least uh, reduce uh, the, all, these, all these roadblocks. Uh, and we believe, like at least half of this community here in the room, that uh, Docker-based containers will really revolutionize uh, how we deal with software, how we ship software, how we package software, how we do maintenance, and, and also automate, you know, automating the whole process to access and run, uh, you know, access resources and run your application fully automatically. Uh, so very recently, we got a breakthrough with uh, Lawrence Livermore Lab and Intel together. So now uh, uh, up to 16 containers on 16, uh, uh, so containers are running on 16 nodes. That was one of your questions before, uh, each with uh, 16 physical cores. So uh, the whole thing is running uh, on 256 cores. It's open foam as one of our test cases. And... Uh, so you see, I mean, there is this communication uh, uh, done through MPI between the containers, fully automatic. And uh, so for, for two years, we could do uh, what, we, what we call vertical scaling. So we scaled here within one container on one node on up to 16 physical cores. Uh, on most machines, we had a one machine, NeforScale, which gave us 60 cores on uh, one node, very powerful. So we could, we could really demonstrate vertical scaling with a performance loss of maximum 1% and for very big, so like uh, 1, 5, 10 million cells of 3D simulation in fluid dynamics, for example. Uh, and uh, just about uh, a month ago or so, together with Lawrence Livermore Lab, we could now finally also sh demonstrate uh, horizontal scaling. And whatever we did, we never uh, reached uh, or we, we never uh, found uh, a performance loss larger than 2%. So for real big uh, our, uh, our runs of uh, these applications. Okay, so yes, so that's, that's what we say. Packaging, porting, accessing, using, scaling with very low overhead. Yeah. Okay. So, yeah, I mean, this, this is something, so what, what, what you can see, so see there, uh, two, uh, minus nine, it's even faster on Docker, but, and we don't know why, so, okay. So, uh, uh, this is just, uh, let, let me just go through, through, uh, through that quickly. Uh, we believe that everybody in our community, be it the ISVs, the resource provider, uh, community members, if you have an open source code, or if you have your homegrown, in-house developed code, you can dockerize it uh, or containerize it, have your library, and uh, at your fingertip you can upload it and run it, even if the whole thing is five years old, right? So, and experts, obviously. So, I mean, we are looking forward to the whole thing, and uh, so our multi-container environment now, so this is new, uh, it is, so it is uh, full of tools and libraries and so on, so mostly in this collaboration from Intel uh, and uh, network between containers. Uh, at Lawrence Livermore, they have this uh, uh, supercomputer with InfiniBand. 
Uh, so very tightly coupled uh, applications, uh, low latency, etc., uh, and shared file system and secure communication between the containers. SSH. Someone asked that question as well. And uh, okay, so now let me. Yeah. So there's a demo which uh, uh, I've set up together with Lubos from CFD um, support in Prague. Uh, and uh, so he kindly offered this uh, NACA. 3D NACA uh, wing example uh, with open foam. And uh, so how do we do that? Uh, so you open, you know, we have Wi-Fi. Uh, you could even do that from, 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 from yourself there. So we have Wi-Fi. So every container has its own URL. So you can really specifically access a very specific container all over the world in uh, sitting on, on, on some resources. So let me do that quickly. So there is uh, this uh, password. Uh, as you see here, uh, currently the container I want to access, the open form container, is sitting on CPU 24-7 cloud resources in Potsdam near Berlin. So uh, there is the open form container sitting. And uh, let me try. So, so let's uh, hope that we get a good connection. And uh, do I have? Uh, I didn't check if, I, if I'm connected, but, uh, oh yeah, I'm connected. So this is already at CPU 24 seven, right? Uh, this is sitting in the cloud, so uh, the host, and uh, the password which I copied from uh, what you have seen there, and uh, so that's it. So I'm in the cloud. I'm not only in the cloud, but I'm in my container. Right? <laughs> and uh, this looks really like your desktop. Intentionally, it looks like your desktop because, uh, as I said, engineers just want to see their own desktop. Uh, many people are really confused and say, oh, that's my desktop. No, it's not really. I mean, it's your virtual desktop. Yeah. So it is sitting in the, in the, uh, on CPU 24-7 resources. Let me see. There is a terminal. I mean, this is, this is all, I mean, this is well known for you. And uh, so, no, this is README. Uh, no, that, yeah, that's the computer. I could go in there, but there is also, uh, oh, there, there is old stuff even, which I did not kill. I played around before. So, uh, I was a little bit too fast. So, now it's a clean uh, desktop. Uh, so, so, here's the terminal. Okay, so that's the terminal. <laughs> oh, the, the light is so, so nice. Oh, I, now I see it. Oh, okay. Yeah, uh, you can do everything. Uh, so, why aren't you? Let me try that one. One second. So, this is funny. I don't. Okay, here we are. One more. Okay. So, sorry. So let me just. Uh, so the, the here is almost no light here. But I think that's the terminal, right? <laughs> I mean, I should remember the icon. <laughs> oh, nice. Uh, this one is already hot now. Uh, you forgot your game. Okay. In interesting enough, uh, what, what I... Okay. For some reason, it... Uh, oh, okay, don't worry. So, uh, I knew... It, I, I'm, I'm using the midnight commander. Uh, I have to go in there, right? So let me see. And okay, so I'm now here in my directory. And in the directory, you already see uh, uh, the example. Uh, when you go the first time, you go, for example, to the marketplace uh, and you click on, a, on an offering like open foam on CPU 24 7 for 24 hours on 16 cores, etc., you will immediately get a uh, welcome email saying, uh, welcome Christian, here is your access to the cloud, which is basically the URL, and here's the password. And here are the three different ways to get your data into the cloud, through Dropbox. You have seen here, this one is uh, working with Dropbox, box.com, and uh, some other stuff. And uh, so then you get your data. So I already uploaded, to make it faster, uploaded the NACA uh, example uh, uh, to, the, uh, to the system. And then uh, I can basically, I can, uh, I can start, I can uh, get out of that. Uh, I don't need that. 
and then we could do uh, like uh, something. So we, we, could, we could run it. I mean, you, you see, it's very familiar. Um, let me see uh, if that uh, kind of works. Uh, uh, like in the background. OK, so now it's, up. it's, it's already running in the cloud now uh, on uh, one node of uh, the CPU 24-7 resources. It might take a while. Uh, we could check. So this, this is uh, 10 time steps, open form. Uh, it's about a million, uh, uh, a million cells. And uh, so we terminate it at, uh, after, as I said, after 10 start time steps. And we can visualize. We can even. Uh, uh, we can even uh, uh, plot some things, but it should be ready. Let me see if we can, if we can do the plot final results uh, dot. Um, what is, was it? Command not found. If I'm a little bit more patient, then uh, it will. Uh, it will be ready in a, maybe in a minute. Is it a GNU plot or plot? It's GNU plot. <laughs> <coughs> Certainly. Should I? Maybe, maybe it is faster than I. So, GNU plot. Yes, you're right. So, plot final results dot. OK, is it there, that one? Yeah. So, so this, these are our experiment results uh, from physical experiments in the wind tunnel. And obviously, uh -huh. obviously, the final result is not ready yet. But there it is. So the red line is the relatively coarse uh, grain mesh result of the simulation. Uh, that's the pressure, pressure distribution around the wing. The wing is about 20 degree angle of attack, so like that. And uh, so what, what, we, what we, I mean, you can really, so what, what you see, basically, I mean, uh, what I do, I do on my uh, workstation here, right? But you see the reaction is almost immediately coming back from the cloud. So, uh, uh, let me demonstrate a little bit uh, uh, more uh, with, uh, uh, with um, what is it, uh, uh, with foam, what is, what is, uh, let, me, let me see, if, how do I have it, with, uh, no, uh, what is, what is the, uh, uh, do you mind if I, while you are, Thinking of it, maybe. No, I'm. I'm. I'm just thinking. Uh, um, to to call uh, uh, the um, para. Yeah, I, I. I just forgot. Is it? Is it? Pardon? Para foam. Para view. No, no. It's but but yeah. Para but but the the. Uh, it's. I think yeah yeah. It, it, it is, yeah, that, that's what I'm confused. I'm, I'm not an open foam guy, but yeah, so it, it calls para foam, calls para view. <laughs> okay, how nice. Uh, yes, so let, let me just check. Uh, it, it should be, yeah, it, it, is, it is here. Okay, so, so we are here. So, so that's, and, and you see the interaction. Uh, we need to go to the last time step. You see there are, here, over there now, 10 time steps. We need to... Uh, Apply, right, and here we are. So this is the, uh, uh, let me just uh, get it a little bit in, right in the middle. And this is the computation region, as you see here. So, okay, so when you zoom closer, now you see the <laughs> wing coming up. What, what, what means that? Right, right, there is a huge computation area around it. Uh, and uh, finally, this is uh, the wing. And now you can just play around with uh, 
uh, let me get, get up to that one here. Uh, for example, with the pressure distribution, you go to P. So that's, you, you see the pressure. I mean, you see, the reaction which is coming back from the cloud uh, is almost immediate. I, I can't see a real difference, right? So uh, this, this, this one is the cell-based. You, you see the cells here already. If you want to see the cells a little bit closer, you get the surface. Now, now this is uh, the mesh, which is uh, surrounding the 3D wing. You see the boundary layer more closer. I could zoom in more, so then, then, then you can, can see that. And finally, uh, so we have the, yeah, uh, like velocity and, uh, and a few others. So you see that the ring is, uh, the wing is uh, about that. But as you have seen, so that the demonstration was uh, that uh, there is almost no delay. It's, it's basically really like you are working on your own desktop. And with that one... Then we got a ring, maybe we can wrap up. Yeah, uh, absolutely. Uh, so the same way I can leave the whole thing, I can shut it down. Okay, I'm here on uh, that one. And uh, okay, so then we have that. We have used that, and thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. Yeah. Okay. Some questions for, for Wolfgang? Or oh, in general? I mean, now. Uh, five right. Ago. Yeah, we can. Yeah. 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 Uh, so you have this uh, list of uh, challenges that you faced and uh, you picked all of them. I'm uh, just curious if you could elaborate on two of them. Uh, could we have the look at the slide? Uh, we, we have it in mind. Do, do we have it in mind? So security was one thing. Yeah, security is one thing. So, so, and licenses was other thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, so, uh, security uh, is uh, basically handled that way that you have an application container and uh, you as an end user, yeah, so and it's sitting somewhere in the cloud, you as an end user can only access this container uh, in, uh, you know, like uh, to getting your parameters back and forth and so on. Ah, so you speak pre-verified containers? Yeah, 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 absolutely. Yes, yes. So, uh, especially, you know, with commercial clouds, and uh, the application is sitting in the container in the cloud, you are not able to go through the container somewhere to, down to the system, right? So for root access or something like that, right? So that is number one. Uh, one very important thing in the context of security is also that uh, in the cloud, very often people complain that you lose control over your application, where is it running, et cetera, how is it running, and so on. So we have a full-blown control, monitoring, reporting, uh, environment built in this enhanced HPC con container. So that this is more mental. Uh, someone uh, uh, talked about server hugging before, you know, like uh, full control of my server. This is what people really expect also in the cloud, right? Then they feel more secure themselves. Because very often, I mean, security in the cloud is as secure as uh, on your home system, basically, right? It's basically the same or even better technology, right? But it's mostly in the heads of the end user and their managers that this might be insecure because they, they feel uh, uh, yeah, unsecure, so to speak. Uh, they cannot really control, et cetera. So this, that's number one. Number two, the licensing. As I said before, this is kind of a discussion with each of these individual ISVs. Every ISV, is had, they have their own licensing uh, thing and uh, how, how they, this should be in the, in the, uh, in the cloud. So what, what we say is uh, we, we approach the ISVs and say, so give me a price for one hour, one day, one week, whatever they want, uh, on 8, 16, 32, 64 cores. Yeah. And they, then they, they take their annual license and they divide it by 365, and then they have a daily thing, and then they add 50%, and then that's, yeah, they usually do. <laughs> and, and, that's, and that's their licensing, but then you don't have to uh, connect to a license server anymore, because everything is fixed. So what the end user sees is just the bundle of uh, the hardware resources underneath and the software resources on top. It's bundled for 24 hours. Everybody gets their share, you know, exactly what they want, as I said, divided by 365 uh, and uh, uh, at 
and, uh, and that's it. And there's no hassle anymore because of that pre-built, pre-defined, pre-priced uh, piece of, uh, uh, of solution. Okay, so I mean now we have a couple of minutes left. I think for, as we, as we saw in this workshop that there are a variety of different ways of taking Docker. I think that's clear for now. Uh, even within the genomics community, we yeah, have yeah. Two, uh, two examples that they are kind of similar but different. <laughs> uh, yeah, so as, as seen today, Docker is not settled yet, I think, or containers in general. Um, we, have, we, we talked about Docker a lot, but basically this is this container format that uh, they, they grew a community around it, and there's a, hopefully even a, a standard for packaging containers so that you can run it with Docker or with different Docker container technologies that we didn't touch today. I think that's something we'll see next year maybe. Um, so yeah, I think next year we will hopefully have the same workshops, or not the same, but... Um, and uh, let's see what next year brings. I think uh, a lot of the orchestration things we try to keep out of it a little bit because uh, no one knows how this will turn out, I think. And, yeah. So I hope you liked it, and uh, next year, same date, maybe not, but same, same time frame. Let's questions? Closing questions? Closing remarks? Or? I, want, I want to mention something, because I see Hans again. Uh, so uh, we did not mention that uh, Cluster Vision uh, basically took care of our coffee breaks. So thank you very much for that one. Bye.